Child is a character with an extremely varied perception between the casual and hardcore player base. Quite similar, actually, to his rerun partner, Zhang Li. Except, Tartalia is the opposite. Because of his sometimes awkward skill cooldown mechanic, lackluster unbuffed damage, and somewhat complex rotations for his best team, many casuals genuinely believe him to be mid-tier at best. Once you can understand the strengths of his kit, however, and actually use him properly in the right content, you can make a very solid case for Ajax's best team, the very best in the entire game. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Child is an on-field DPS and Hydro applicator. His ability to apply Hydro is unparalleled, especially in AoE. He is one of the only two characters with true quadratic scaling built into his kit, meaning that if positioned correctly, his damage is stratospherically high. He's an extremely free-to-play friendly character, but he's also rather difficult to pilot for many casual players due to his relatively complex setups, lack of interruption resistance, and difficulty managing his cooldowns. Still, if you can learn to max him out, he is absurdly strong. So let's start off with his pros and cons. First off, he's one of the highest damaging AoE teams in the game, second only to Nilu, although some would argue that he might be even better. He has solid single target performance due to the ability to front load the damage for his burst, and he has the ability to front load to finish off waves quickly. He's very free to play and low spender friendly with both his teams and his weapons. If you do want to invest in him, he has a ton of really good 5 star bows and good battle pass options. He has great team elemental coverage and a solid option for a flex slot, meaning you can bring him to pretty much every iteration of the Abyss. He doesn't use other powerful Hydros like Sing Cho or Yulan, so you're free to use characters like that on the other side. He's the best enabler for a Zhang Ling in the entire game because he's really the only character that can output enough Hydro in AoE for her to vaporize every single one of her hits on every enemy. He also doesn't need constellations for really close to his peak performance. And he has really, really excellent team flexibility if you don't mind not being optimal, like if you're just taking into the overworld or the lower floors of the abyss and if you can one rotate an enemy meaning you don't have to wait for him to get up back off cooldown his clear times are absolutely ridiculous for weaknesses, he only has one truly great team and it consists of very contested supports such as bennett or kazua he can have some downtime due to his skill cooldown, but it can be managed by funneling Zhang Ling, switching off early, or using his bow charge shot to apply Hydro for the second rotation. He can be a little tricky to play, and he is definitely quite a technical character between not having any damage resistance built into his kit or any interruption resistance. He is a mobile character though, so you are able to dodge, and his double swirl setups are not quite as brain dead as other characters, but are definitely very doable if you'll give it the chance. It could be considered a con that his constant installations are not a very good choice if you're a dolphin player who wants to max him out with more money. He does have somewhat lower personal damage compared to some other on-fielders, but it's more than made up for by the fact that applying that much Hydro and AoE is extremely valuable and does contribute to a lot of team damage. And as I said, if you don't one rotate the enemy, or if your second rotation you only use part of it, or if you just barely don't kill an enemy and it's you're, you can't you don't want to quite start a whole second rotation, but they're also not dead yet, this is where his clear times start to fall off and he starts to not be as good of a choice compared to other options but as long as you're able to manage that he is an insane character For his power level, he is extremely high. Definitely S or A tier, depending. Some will say that his best setups and rotations aren't quite practical to always pull off in Abyss, and as such, he falls more in the A tier category as opposed to the S tier, and his ceiling, or his speed running ability, will be an S tier team. In practicality, even if you're a great player, a lot of times he'll be closer to A. In terms of account value, he does have really high account value if you're willing to get good at him, because of what I, like I said, the elemental coverage from his team and the ability to perform in both single target and AoE mean he's going to perform very well in pretty much every single abyss. And he doesn't use highly contested dendro units or other hydro units, so you still have lots of good characters to make a second team. He does have somewhat lower account value if you already have teams that really want Bennett and that really want Kazuha. So depending on your account, he might be a very high value account or actually a pretty low value. It just really depends on what you're trying to do.
For teams, I do want to make some distinction between Abyss 12 teams and Overworld teams. I mostly delve into Abyss 12 teams here because Overworld teams are much less demanding and much more flexible. Being Hydro, you can pretty much put him with anything in the Overworld as long as you have some sort of healing or defensive unit. I think his Abyss team is really great for the Overworld, but characters that I'm not going to recommend in his Abyss team, such as for example Zhongli, but for the Overworld, you know, you're killing Ajdaha with your child Zhengling team, I would recommend bringing, at, bringing Zhongli instead of Kazuha because it's just going to be a lot easier. Same with other weekly bosses, right? So you're going to want to freely switch up your strategy with different characters if you're not super concerned about the Abyss. But if you're wanting to get the very most out of his teams, then that's where we'll go to his potential Abyss teams, which this one being the international team is the strongest. Obviously, I've got Ayato here instead of Child, but Bennett, Shengling, Kazuha. Kazuha enables a really nice double swirl where you can swirl both the, the Hydro off of Child and the Pyro for Shang Ling. The Kazuha slot is the most flexible. So if you don't have Kazuha, don't worry too much. Sucrose is going to be good as well. It's just a little bit more complex to pull off the setups and generally not quite as easy to play. It makes an already pretty technical team even more technical, but it's still very doable. If the Abyss happens to recommend a Dendro check, you can definitely bring Nahida for an Intergrational, I think people call it. Grass and Dendro, haha. -ha. And you can put someone in here if you need more defensive utility. You can put Zhongli in this slot. If you need Electro for some sort of elemental check, you can use Fischl, and you can use some sort of off-field sub-DPS like Albedo as well. But if you're looking for ceiling damage, being able to double swirl is really, really important, and so this is what you want to go through for that with either Kazuha or Sucrose. You can also actually use Venti. When the content is Ventiable, that will be very, very good too. The next one is one of my wife's favorite teams for Child. It's the Taser team. The one thing about it is it doesn't have a healer. You're solely relying on Beto's interruption resistance, but by using Kazuha staggering ability and getting your enemies off balance and not able to attack you this team can actually work and unlike a lot of other taser teams which use sing cho the hydro application you get from child is more aoe so you are going to have a bit less single target strength traded for more aoe strength versus a sucrose taser you don't get as many swirls but you do get that quadratic scaling ability if it's that kind of content from child so it's a pretty decent trade-off you can also use them in a nilu team i haven't tried this personally and i haven't seen too much online about it but i really really like the Ayato version. The only thing about Child is he really doesn't have much in the way of off-field Hydro application, where at least Ayato has his burst. So I think that the Ayato version is going to overall be better. But I do think for just getting an absolute truckload of Dendro seeds very front in a very front-loaded way, uh, there is some merit to a Child version. And I'll definitely be trying it as soon as I get it. You can also do a Burgeon variant, where you're using Child on field to create Burgeons, and then you're using Toma to trigger them. This will require you to go probably almost definitely with Baiju, I don't think a different option will work. I don't think Kokomi will allow for enough Dendro to stay on the field. It's definitely not the most optimal version team, but it's something you can do. You can also do a freeze team. You're going to change up Child's artifacts to Blizzard Strayer on this team, ideally. And the freeze, the cryo slots are very flexible. I have Shenhen gotten you because I like how they look on the select screen here, but you can go for Rosaria or even Diona if you want some defensive option as well. As I said, you can get even more creative for the overworld, but those are my top teams. But when you're actually entering Abyss 12, it really is going to be this one that you'll pretty much always default. For how to build him starting with level, he's not a character that needs to go to level 90 for almost all of his teams. Only if you're using him in a Nilu Bloom team will you actually want to take him to 9. If you want his nukes to be really big, then you'll want to probably take his burst to 9. For most of his damage, you might consider taking his skill to 9. You don't want to neglect his charge shot, which, because although you might be tempted to never use his charge shot, it's actually an important part of his kit, where during his downtime and you're going to be funneling Bennett into Shang Ling, you're also going to be using Child's charge shot to apply Hydro, and oftentimes this charge shot will be vaporized, so it actually will do quite a significant amount of damage, and so you do want to take it probably to level 8 eventually. For weapons, his best in slot will be the Polar Star, although it is a bit of a chore to do what you need to do to fully stack it. And if you don't do what you need to do to fully stack it, it is not his best option. So just remember that if you do get his weapon, which I don't recommend going for, by the way, much better to have wished on the previous weapon banner with Aqua and the first great magic. But if you are having a Polar Star from a previous banner, or for some reason you decided to wish for it, you just have to remember to follow the rotation to stack it properly. The Thundering Pulse is also an extreme 
extremely good choice for child you will be able to fully stack the passive and the normal attack buff is really good for him but all the five star weapons or at least a lot of them are very very close the aqua simulacra is very very close in damage to the other two it's basically negligible whichever one you choose and this passive is universal there's nothing you need to do to stack it and so that's it's a really nice way to just get an unconditional buff the first great magic is also an incredible choice as it boosts charge attack damage and charge attacks do a significant amount in child's kit and you will be using his charge attack as part of his best combos so the first great magic if you happen to get it is a great choice and also it looks extremely good on him both parts of the passive the charge attack damage as well as the attack are useful for him and even movement speed is not completely useless at least compared to other charge shot users but it's still pretty bad but the first two parts the charge attack damage and the attack are very good if you happen to have Tainari's signature bow the hunter's path that's really good on him too I'll also point out that the aqua simulacra is his best option for his burst and burst damage which is actually really relevant for clearing waves using his burst so yeah hunter's path and also if you do get the skyward harp which I don't have but it's the standard banner five star bow that's also a really really incredible choice it's not that far off from these options and believe it or not even the Amos bow is a good choice because it also increases normal and charge attack damage it's only the second part of the passive that you don't get the only thing is it has an attack percent substat instead of a crit substat which of course is not as ideal especially since you're standing in Bennett's circle and if you have it it is stronger than every four star option except for the Viridus and hunt the battle pass bow both the Viridus and hunt and the new battle pass bow are solid choices but because of the grouping innate to the Viridus and hunt I would always recommend it over the other battle pass bow for child if you don't have any of those options don't despair the craftable prototype crescent the craftable Hamayumi the new craftable song of stillness is also really good for child with the only caveat being that you do need to heal him to actually activate the passive it's a pretty strong passive 32% at r5 more damage bonus is really really good and the attack percent stops that is good for him as well personally because the prototype crescent requires a weak point the Hamayumi requires you to not use your burst which you definitely want to I would go over I would go for this weapon over the other two however you can also use the King Squire there's a lot of choices apparently which also has an attack percent substat increases his elemental mastery the King Squire's benefit will be when you're using your burst and you can vaporize it it will be really good but overall all of them have some sort of little conditional thing about them so you kind of have to pick which one is best for you I personally would probably go with the song for song of stillness but I guess with Bennett as your only healer activating the passive isn't going to be too reliable so at the end of the day you kind of have a bunch of different options and none of them really hit out of the park rust used to be a pretty popular option but because you're going to be using your charge attacks fairly heavily although it is strong decreasing the charge attack damage is not really recommended if you happen to have a high refined moon's moon that can be really good particularly for his burst damage same with the stringless if you can vaporize his burst and he does get a fair bit of damage bonus from the from the passive for even his skill so as you can see until you go for either the paid battle pass option or one of the five stars there is kind of some sort of caveat with all the four star options that make you kind of second guess which one's going to be best for you you kind of just have to pick the one you want to go with none of them are perfect but they're all really really strong and at the end of the day he's not a huge super massive portion of the team's damage he's not a hyper carry so although he might be doing 30 35 percent of the team's damage it's not 80 percent of the team's damage so if you don't have the very strongest weapon for him it's not the end of the world nymph stream is going to be the number one best set for his damage the two piece is the hydro bonus and the four piece after one of his different types of damage hits he gets increased attack and increased hydro damage bonus depending on how many stacks you make and he'll make all of these stacks because they're normal charge plunging attacks elemental skills elemental bursts hit opponent you're going to be doing all of this stuff so you're going to be getting all of these stacks and so this is definitely going to be his best solution for his personal damage you're going to want to run attack percent substat hydro damage bonus goblet and crit rate or crit damage hat but nymph stream isn't required you can also choose to run the four piece heart of depth if you happen to have a good set on it but i will say getting a four piece heart of depth or really a four piece nymph stream isn't that crazy of an upgrade for your total team's damage especially since nymph stream is not in a very resin efficient artifact set it's along with the varukasha's glow which not very many characters are going to be using so to be honest i would highly recommend a two-piece two-piece whether that's a two-piece heart of depth and you can get it from the strong box along with a two-piece gladiator or a two-piece shimanawa that's most likely going to be your best bet after playing the game for so long and doing your weekly bosses you're going to have some really good gladiator pieces or if you used to farm emblem a lot you might have some really good shimanawa pieces and so you're going to get probably a lot more damage out of a two-piece two-piece you could even go for a two-piece heart of depth and two-piece nymph stream it's one of those situations that his set bonuses aren't as good for him as just having really really good substats although again if you want the very best for your child which what what
what parent doesn't, the nymph stream is going to be the way to go. I've also seen some people run the emblem of severed fates on him. That can give you a really big nuke, which is nice. Can be good for clearing waves and getting his burst back if you like to spam it a lot. Generally not his most optimal option, but depending on how you're playing him, it can actually be pretty good. For energy recharge requirements, it's not necessarily to build too much ER on him, but having a few sub sites is nice so that you can burst every rotation because his burst is really, really good. He generally won't need any more than 130% energy recharge. So most of the time, this 20% is going to be wasted. Often he can get a good way with less than that, especially if your cause was uniting Favonius, Favonius sword. If you find yourself not quite being able to burst every rotation, then you might want to look at giving him some more ER. Hopefully throughout your substats and your artifacts, you can get, you know, maybe 15, 20% and that'll be good enough with Kazwa on Favonius. For gameplay tips, as I said, he does have somewhat specific rotations. So I recommend looking up certain rotation guides. I'm on kitchingmains.com and they have a nice rotation guide for all of different, a bunch of different child's teams here. And so you can check out this rotation guide. You can also find a lot more on YouTube because I don't have them yet. And it can go, you can get quite in depth explaining rotations. I'm not going to go over it here, but you can either replay this section of the video or, or check out kachingmains.com or look up other guides on YouTube so you can get a better idea of what kind of rotations you can be using. They can be a tiny bit confusing just because you are going to be using his charge shots on the downtime. So if you're not doing a one rotation, then the other rotations can be a little bit trickier. So feel free to look those up and get good from there. That's definitely what I'll be doing. Forest Constellations, the first one can be a little bit of a bait. 20% reduced cooldown is not as much as you'd think. And he does use the downtime to funnel Shangling with Bennett and to use some charge shots to set up for the next rotation. So reducing the cooldown is not as OP as you would expect, but it still can be really nice for maybe if you're in the overworld or if you just don't like that, that kind of downtime play style, it can be a nice comfort constellation, but it's not really needed for his best teams and rotations. Constellation two, he regenerates four elemental energy when he's defeating enemies. The thing about this is when child's energy will be the most needed is when you're against bosses or fewer enemies or enemies that don't drop a lot of energy. If you're defeating enemies, they're generally dropping a fair bit of energy already. So normally this will be useless. Plus you're going to be building your energy around the fact that you might not be getting this passive because you're not always going to be able to kill opponents. So you'll probably need the energy anyways, and then this will end up being useless. So although it can be nice to maybe burst him extra times, especially when you're playing more casually, generally for optimality, it's sort of a bait. His skill increasing the level, it's nice, but again, he doesn't do a crazy amount of team damage. Constellation 4 is probably his most interesting constellation, giving him some off-field rotation or off-field application for Hydro. Can be quite good for those teams that you do want to use him off-field in, like Freeze or Bloom. And there's also some other fancy stuff that you can do that I'm not going to get into because it's sort of whale territory, but it's probably his coolest constellation. Constellation 5, increasing burst, very good for burst damage. And Constellation 6 finally take, takes care of that rotation issue, but again, not a huge team-wide increase. It's not like it increases his damage substantially compared to most Constellation 6 in the game. It's pretty lackluster, even though it's like it's like a comfort constellation for his C6. So overall, his constellations are very not necessary. The best way to have Child increase his damage is maybe you consider Kazuo C2, maybe you consider a 5-star bow, but other than that, you really just want to get better at playing him, and that's the way you're going to get the biggest damage increase for him. Versus other characters, obviously he's compared to Ayato a lot. And I would say that overall, it's a very simple comparison. Ayato is the jack of all trades. Of all of those other teams that I talked about, Ayato is generally the superior choice where they're gonna use him in Freeze, Taser, all those other teams that I talked about, Ayato is gonna outperform him. But when you look at Child's best team, which is the international team we've talked so much about, then Child will by far outperform Ayato. So Ayato really is the jack of all trades, master of none, whereas Child is the master of one. But the nice part about Child's team is that that master of one team can work against pretty much everyone. So whether or not he's more valuable on your account really just depends. Do you want to have fun trying out more different teams? And are you not as concerned about the abyss? And you just like a more easy, comfy gameplay? Because if so, I would recommend Ayato. But if you want the highest ceiling, if you want power, if you want Abyss 12, super speedy, super fancy, clippable clears, then Child is your guy. He's also completely different than Nervalette and most of the other Hydro characters that we have. So I'm not going to do a gigantic comparison, but I will talk about maybe Nilu because 
because they do have a very similar place i would say in general i think that nilu is slightly stronger and because especially because she's a lot more practical however in single target nilu can become more frustrating but you do have the option of putting characters like sing cho into her team the funny part is people talk about nilu being restrictive whereas child has less restrictive optimal teams than nilu does or more restrictive less options for those optimal teams overall i think that nilu is the better team especially that it's more easy to play but it does get walled by cryo shield dendromune enemies whereas child doesn't get walled by anything so they both really do have their pros and cons and it really just depends what you want to go for For future prospects, I don't really see much changing, again, unless we get some sort of alternative to Bennett or alternative to Shang Ling, which honestly, it's about time. Is it, are we gonna have to wait all the way to Natlin? Or maybe is Arla Cucino gonna be released during this year and she's gonna be an alternative to one of these two? I'm not sure. Child did get a little bit of a buff through Dendro by being able to run Nahida. So if we need, if he needs to clear some Hydro Lectors, for example, teching in Nahida into this slot can be really, really great. But overall, his teams have been set in stone for a very long time. Time. And I do expect some changes if we ever get an alternative to Bennett and Shang Ling, but are they really going to do that? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. For overworld and aesthetic, I've heard that he's pretty annoying to play in the overworld because of his very long cooldown. I would highly recommend if you are going to use him in the overworld to level up that normal attack talent because you do want to be using that charge shot. It's not zero damage. You're going to be able to want to use that in the overworld. So that's one of the ways to make it less annoying for him to play is to get that charge attack leveled up so that when his skill is on cooldown, that you still have something that you can do. Jing Ling is also pretty annoying to use in the overworld. So probably a different team, it might be a little bit better just because of her high energy needs. But because he's Hydro, he works with so many teams so you can kind of use whatever you want. And finally for aesthetic, I think he has a really, really great aesthetic. He sort of has a bit of an understated, classy, but cool, slightly edgy kind of vibe going on. I really like it. My only gripe is that I really wish he summoned his whale or his ultimate. That would have been so sick because I love whales. But other than that, I really like him. Please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel channel check out our discord if you want help with your teams we got a great community over there if you love what the channel is doing and you want to support the channel check out the patreon or channel memberships on youtube thank you to those who are supporting me it really helps me through the inconsistent times of youtube ad revenue if you don't want to do any of that that is totally fine just watching the video has been more than enough thank you so much everybody bye for now